Hi everybody and welcome back. It's Friday the 23rd and the last beautiful day in the neighborhood, possibly for quite some time. We've got changes coming up, a big cold front we've been talking about now for days. Indeed, it's going to give us some shower chances, mostly cloudy across the board Saturday. Warm air still in place, increasing chances of some showers uh, will be the scenario. And a rapid, a rapid deepening area of low pressure just to the west will give us a chance of some widespread showers throughout much of next week. So rain for much of your weekend, at least the latter half. A bit of a break, and then... We'll see certainly some active weather throughout much of your weekend. Cooler temperatures along with it. It's not going to be as nice as this week past. So I'll leave you on that note as bad as I hate to. The McGough County Fiscal Court met at 5 o'clock this afternoon. We will, of course, have coverage of that starting next week tonight. A serious drug-related arrest, more than 100 oxycodone pills, 30 milligram nearly worth $10,000 on the street. Seized today by the Sagersville Police Department, a McGoffa County man was arrested. I've got some artistic news to pass along to you, along with some details about all the Halloween-related festivities in Sagersville that start Monday. One annual event is Monday. I'll tell you more about that. I've also got another theft-related report, uh, a couple more actually, as that will be a common thread for several of our top stories this Friday evening. And In fact, we'll go ahead and begin with one of those. I was in Johnson County as it relates to well a personal matter and a story for tonight's program in just a few moments. And just as, as I just as I arrived back in Sagersville this afternoon, Sagersville police officer Jeremiah Watson had just wrapped up a traffic stop that netted nearly ten thousand dollars in illegal drugs and also some other disturbing characteristics about the arrest. A McGoffa County man was subsequently arrested. In all, there were several pills seized worth 60 bucks a piece, totaling more than $9,000, $9,400 on the street. This individual was also said to have in his possession a couple of hundred dollars in cash, several needles. He was charged with DUI, trafficking, and other offenses. A milligram, 157 of them. Got a call that there was two vehicles leaving the sand bottom area. Uh, stopped both vehicles. Uh, first vehicle was a Jeep. Everything checked out with him. Uh, second vehicle was a white Crown Vic 99 model. And this was on the driver. Watson said he fell in behind the vehicle as it came into downtown Sagersville and initiated a traffic stop in front of the Sagersville Speedway. And then upon questioning the individual and after assistance by the Kentucky State Police, the individual, the driver, was asked to exit his car. And then that's when Watson says he noticed a bulge in his pocket that turned out to be the container holding the pills. And in all, he was found with the illegal prescription medication, two needles in his shirt pocket, and one in his car, and some other disturbing items. I noticed a bulge in his pocket, left front pocket, and it looked to be a pill bottle. Um, and of course it was a pill bottle. Uh, KSP showed up, they gave field sobriety, he showed all clues in, uh, in all three sections of it of being impaired. Um, we've done a search of the vehicle, we found another needle, I found one on him, and uh, also found a can in the car where he was uh, getting one of these pills ready to inject in his arm. Um, he was taken to Poppy Hall for his blood and medical clearance before going on over to the jail. Watson says hidden underneath a box of cigarette filters was this can upside down, a portion of a cigarette filter cut off and lying in the middle of some liquid that has since dried up and what appeared to be a powdered one of the 30 milligram oxycodone pills in which he believed that he was using to inject through one of the syringes that was discovered on the driver. Arrested was 51-year-old Jack Brent Crace of Royalton, charged with driving under the influence of drugs, driving on a suspended license, possession of a driver's license that was no longer valid, and failure to surrender that license, trafficking in a controlled substance, prescription not in its original or proper container, and possession of drug paraphernalia. He is still lodged in the Big Sandy Jail on those charges. I've got two other theft-related reports in our top headlines, and we've got some artistic news uh, that will also go along with reminding everyone and letting everyone know about the activities and festivities for Halloween here in Sagersville starting Monday of next week. And it all begins right after a few words from a few of these folks who I hope that you will let know you're watching every chance you get. 
to get high-speed internet on their state-of-the-art fiber optic network for all of your home and business solutions or to watch TV without a contract on over 200 digital channels with superb quality or stay connected with family and friends with 24-7 telephone service you can always depend on contact Foothills Broadband today or just click on their link to the right to find out how they're working to provide the latest in communications at affordable prices with exceptional service at Foothills Broadband. In our next theft-related report, of which there have been several, there are on tonight's program and several in the past days here on the program, but this comes from the Johnson County Sheriff's Department where they tell me this past Wednesday afternoon, Sheriff's deputies, specifically Byron Fairchild and Chris Blair, were patrolling in the lower Twin Branch area off of Route 25 when they saw a green Ford F-150 being driven by Jesse D. Blair of Hager Hill. It was a traffic stop for the initial violation of not wearing a seatbelt that resulted in a theft-related arrest, as well as other charges levied against Mr. Blair. During the traffic stop, it was found that Blair had an active arrest warrant, and after conducting a field sobriety test, it was also determined that Blair appeared to be intoxicated and was in possession of a hypodermic syringe. And after consent was given to search his this vehicle, the deputies recovered various items that had been stolen from around the neighborhood. Jesse Blair was taken into custody. He was subsequently charged with driving under the influence, second offense, possession of drug paraphernalia, no insurance, second offense, no registration place, no registration receipt, improper equipment, obstructed vision or windshield, and failure to wear a seat belt. He was also served with an outstanding arrest warrant. An additional arrest warrant was obtained on Blair for receiving stolen property, and he is still lodged in the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center. The stolen items were returned to the rightful owner the following day. The case remains under investigation by Deputy Fairchild. This is a photograph of Blair, and, of course, this is on the heels of that joint investigation by the McGoffa County and Johnson County Sheriff's Department just earlier this week in which two other Johnson County men uh, were found to be in possession of a great deal of items that they had reportedly stolen from a Johnson County residents. This next report is that of a warrant that's been issued for a McGoffa County man, and it's also a case that has consumed a great deal of my time this week and that of other individuals. A Thomas Price of McGoffa County is currently being sought by local authorities with more warrants from other counties uh, pending as it relates to several stolen checks from a local business which were cashed at several area businesses, including Lowe's, Walmart of Paintsville, Walmart of Prestonsburg, and others, and it again all totals thousands of dollars. That local business was the Sagersville Dairy Queen, and that's why it's been consuming some of my time uh, helping with authorities with the investigation. He has been seen on video captured at the before-mentioned stores, uh, cashing or using several checks which were stolen from the Dairy Queen, a total of 12 that we know of at this time. So far, nine have showed up, all for $300 or more. He has purchased gift cards to the tune of several hundred dollars each, riding lawnmowers, a riding lawnmower, a laptop computer, and a host of other items, tools, and other equipment, and a great deal of gift cards at those businesses. Uh, while the investigation is ongoing, warrants have already been obtained for his arrest, felony charges here in McGoffin County, while others are pending in Johnson and Floyd counties. And right now, authorities in all three county in all three counties have been alerted to the warrant that is in his name. Uh, he does reside here in McGoffin County, but it's also believed that he may be staying with a relative in the Van Leer community, and any help with locating his whereabouts will be greatly appreciated. Also, we're still trying to track down, of course, a lot of the items that were purchased with those checks, and then, well, whatever happened to them thereafter, including a riding mower, the deed description of which I'll have later, a laptop computer, a lot of other tools and merchandise from Walmart, Lowe's, and possibly other stores. He also tried to pass a $1,000 check at the tractor supply store, and that is what tipped off uh, everyone at Dairy Queen when they called after his uh, last name did not match that belonging to the store check. Still got more top headlines to come, but right now, announcements at the top of our McGoffin Farm Bureau community calendar. Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Chris McKenzie, from your wife, from your son, from a whole lot of family and a whole lot of friends. I've got a birthday wish tonight from all of them to Chris McKenzie. Happy, happy birthday to you. 
A reminder about a lost dog. This is a yellow lab, 70 to 80 pounds, an adult dog, possibly wearing two collars uh, and maybe even part of a broken leash attached to one of them last seen uh, in the Meadows area. Uh, a couple of days ago, there is a reward being offered for information leading to its return. 884-8771 is the number you can call for a yellow lab. Answers to the name of Forrest, by the way. Homecoming and Pastor Appreciation Day at the New Bethel Assembly of God and Burning Fork is this weekend. Uh, and it's going to be, of course, this Sunday. Services begin at 11. There will be a dinner to follow. Bring a friend. Bring someone and join them at the New Bethel Assembly of God on Burning Fork for Pastor Appreciation and Homecoming this Sunday. Shuffling right through other announcements as I'm trying to find the next one. Here we are. Don't forget the second annual fall festival is tomorrow here in Sagersville in the Ramey Park, noon till 4. They're going to have a raffle, raffles, I think, uh, games, gift bags, costume contest kids, pumpkin painting kids, maybe moms and dads too, I don't know, uh, food, cornhole tournament, and free fun for the whole family starting tomorrow at noon. Goes to 4 in the Ramey Park in Sagersville. Tomorrow at 1, and I think while the clouds will be there, maybe the rains are going to hold off until the evening. So it should be a good day in, uh, in the shade for the second, no, my apologies, for the benefit for the uh, families and Mike Day and Ivan Howard. Uh, there is a benefit horse show set in their honor tomorrow at 1 at the Morgan County Equestrian Park. I think 28, 29 classes, $10 to enter a class. They've got uh, cheap admission prices, just $3 for adults to get in, kids uh, 8 and under get in free. They've got first, second, and third place ribbons as well. Fun Horse Show tomorrow to help support Mike Day and Ivan Howard. And it's once again at the McGoffa County, the Morgan County, my apologies, Morgan County Equestrian Park beginning at 1. If you've got a calendar announcement, birthday, anniversary, or otherwise, send it to me. Let me tell everyone about it. And remember, you can catch the show the following day in case you missed it the first time or just want or need to catch it again at our website, yournewstoday.com. Turning to funeral announcements brought to you by the McGoffin County Funeral Home, we've learned of the passing of 90-year-old Esta May Ward Mahan of Paintsville, who passed away on yesterday. She was preceded in death by her husband, Elmer. She survived by her son, Fred Mahan. And visitation has been set for this evening, all day tomorrow, and up until services. They're going to begin Sunday morning at 11. Both visitation and services from the Big Mudlick Church of God in Johnson County with burial at the Highland Memorial Park. Arrangements are under the care of the Preston Funeral Home. This next report certainly has an artistic feel and flair to it, and it involves a couple of different stories, uh, all kind of centered around the same area and folks. It takes me to the McGuff County High School and the art department there at Sagersville City Hall and the Sagersville Renaissance Program. And I guess we'll begin by talking about some beta students who are going to be part of the annual Ghost Walk. This has become a very popular event for Halloween over the past several years. It's been hosted by the Sagersville Renaissance Program. Program, but they've also had a lot of help throughout the years and this year it will be beta students from the McGough County High School uh, who are going to be assisting with the walk. Art students are assisting with the props. Stopped in at Miss Andrea Parsons art class at the high school where students were busy making props for the annual ghost walk hosted by the Sagersville Renaissance Center this coming Monday night for the annual and one night only event. And while her students have been busy with that and another civic project, I first found two McGough County High School beta students, actually the club's president and vice president, to tell me just a little bit about Monday night. And I do say a little bit to incredibly talented, smart, and academically achieved ladies who talk much more off camera than they do on. We're going to be having a ghost walk at the Renaissance Center. Uh, Monday at 6 o'clock there will be arts and crafts uh, for the kids inside the Renaissance Center um, as we take the other kids around on our little ghost walk and beta members will be um, there and ready to scare. It starts Monday at 6 at the Renaissance Center. All school-aged children can attend. We're going to start with the smaller kids first and it's free. And I've got some more details about the ghost walk coming in in just a few seconds, so I'm waiting on those. Let me tell you about some pumpkins that you may have started to see in the downtown Sagersville area. Not too long ago, we spoke with uh, another class who was decorating for the fall. This time, they're decorating for Halloween, and they're doing so with a lot of bright colors. Also, Miss Parsons' AP art class is responsible for this event. 
At a request by the mayor of Sagersville for a little something to brighten it up for Halloween, well, they found some very creative ways to express themselves on some pumpkins. Well, mayor Pete Shepard had mentioned to Ms. Parsons that he, he would like the town decorated. He then donated 30 huge pumpkins to our AP art class, and we spent several fun days drawing like spooky designs and painting them, and then they will be displayed around Sagersville. And what, uh, how does it benefit you guys, you think? It's a great way to showcase the art that the youth has in locally and I don't know if you've been by my house on Halloween but I, I got a little reputation for going a little overboard and pumpkins I can say are my thing time to carve them is getting less and less every year and so are the number of pumpkins but I do consider myself enough of an expert to say these are some of the most creative ideas I have seen on a pumpkin ever and just absolutely some beautiful ideas beautifully well done and certainly an artistic flair and it really is another great opportunity for these kids to have their expressions through their artwork seen out in the public. Yeah, we just wanted to, I just talked with the Scum to School administrators and they want to get the school more involved with the city and the city loves to get more involved with the school because they can do things, projects in the city to make it look better and, and just help us out a lot. And this year that uh, Mrs. Wright with the Ag Department that volunteered to come down and bring her students and if anybody comes downtown you'll see the mums and all the all the fall flowers we had out that was the that, that was they're doing and we really appreciate them and now for Halloween you're going to see 31 pumpkins sitting out in the city of Sarasville painted by the art department Mrs. Art Department and they look great you know and everybody just needs to come down drive through town and look at the pumpkins because they've got uh, you let, let them use their imagination and it's uh, they look great. It's a great way to get a more opportunities for for their art to be out in the public and more people to see it and just more assignments for them to do more projects and different things not all painting and not all drawing but fun things different things and from candy corn candy corn and a pumpkin how cool is that the chevron the other artwork all just really great really original and this is only some of the things they've done the decorations and props for the miss teen and miss mcgoffin pageants for the past couple of years well also came from right here in the art room. And I thought this would be a great time to let the mayor remind us about Trick or Treat and all the other related festivities that will be going on in and around Sagersville well, one week from today. Trick or Treat's going to be on Friday the 30th from 6 to 8. Anybody comes out. The health department again is going to have their haunted house. Uh, it's going to be a big, bigger, bigger and better every year. We're going to have the key club there with the games for the kids like last year. We had over 550 kids come through the health department last year and the schools are coming just like they was, and we want to invite anybody out that's just got a kid or an adult, too, just come in and, and help join Halloween with the, with the McGough County Health Department. Staff loves it, and we love to have you come in and, and just have a good day with us. Which I've showed on the news before, it's always a big draw. Uh, a, a lot of kids come by, and it's free for kids of all ages. Wear your Halloween costume Monday night or not, totally up to you. But it does start Monday evening at 6 at the Sagers Renaissance program there, just under the red light, of course, in downtown. And they have their walk that goes up to the Christian church up on the hill and uh, through the dark alley. It's not so dark, moms and dads. Uh, it's a history ghost walk, mind you. Uh, the beta students will be chaperoning and uh, also uh, be involved with it, free for all kids of all ages once again and they'll have refreshments and they'll have some crafts uh, and you can also bring a pumpkin and maybe carve and decorate it while you're there so it all starts monday one night only and it starts at six the younger groups will probably go first before it gets good and dark unless they just want a really good fright and that's all i have on that note all i have to speak about for the rest of the program is your leaking valley recc forecast so proud to have them powering our forecast each and every night. Not so proud of the details there in this evening, as it all, as we knew, had to come to an end. Yeah, I mean, it's really been a nice run, hasn't it? A low of 56, partly cloudy skies tonight, very light wind out there. There is a big mess coming to the west, all part of a cold front that's coming, uh, and it's going to really be felt starting tomorrow. Not with temperatures at the onset. We're still going to see the warmer out in front of it, 72, but we'll see mostly cloudy skies tomorrow. A 30% chance of showers mainly after, I think, 2 tomorrow afternoon. By tomorrow night, mainly after 9, those showers will become much more widespread, and that's when we'll start to pick up maybe an inch or so, maybe even a little more, of rainfall Saturday night. Those same showers will linger over into your early Sunday morning, and I think mainly by 11 a.m., and you'll notice the temperature's taking a plunge. 61 
and 12 degrees lower for nighttime lows on your Sunday. Those showers will end early, and there's one more bright spot in the forecast, pretty much, and that's about it for now, and it is Monday. Uh, we'll still see the temperatures hovering around the, hovering around the low 60s, and we'll see partly sunny and dry skies start to finish, 63, 47, and pretty decent, and actually more than decent, a pretty nice day. However, uh, that rapid deepening area of low pressure that's going to go just to our west is going to make way for some widespread rain uh, next week. Yeah, this is next week. This is another scenario. And this can be one hit after another, possibly. Tuesday, I think we'll still see partly sunny skies in the low to mid-60s, but we'll see the first of several chances of some showers. 30% in the afternoon, uh, 50 or better Tuesday night. By Wednesday, mid-week uh, next week, showers likely across the board. And we'll see some winds, I think, a breezy day as well. 64, 51, temperatures holding, pattern that mid-60 range. Uh, they don't do so for Thursday of next week, where Thursday I have daytime highs around 57 degrees. Friday of next week, I have a 53-degree day. I say it or think it every single week. It feels as though this one began just yesterday and is over in the blink of an eye. We've been working very hard to bring in as much news as possible, and as always, news you'll only see with me. McGoffa County Fiscal Court coverage will begin next week, as well as I'm sure some other things over the course of the weekend or early on Monday that, once again, you're not going to find anywhere else unless you tune in to more of your news today. For now, thank you for watching. Enjoy your not-so-nice outside weekend, and we'll see you then.